Let me introduce you to Mr. Brian Seidler AM. He is the Executive Director of the Master Builders Association in New South Wales. The organisation has played a major role in working with other stakeholders as we start to redefine what a future construction industry in New South Wales will look like. Let me introduce you to Brian Seidler. And Brian, why don't you tell us why you think this is a, an important moment in time for our industry? There is an absolute opportunity to change the direction so that the consumer and the people who use the built environment have a better outcome. And it's a once in a lifetime, once in a generation um, opportunity, and we are going to um, clasp this and, and move forward. I've got to say that from an education point of view, from a quality point of view, from lifting the standards of those constructors in our industry, as well as the people who seek our, our uh, skills, that is the developers, we all has to, have to change. Uh, and this is a unique opportunity. So Brian, you, you've observed the discussions in the political sense. Um, how do you feel that across government and, in, and with other players in government, the seriousness of this now is accepted and, and supported? In my number of decades of observing the industry, I don't think we've had a government that's been more active in wanting to change things than the current government. Access um, to, to the government has been fantastic as long as you've got reasonable and cogent ideas um, and your access to, to um, a new model of how we approach things has uh, also been most welcomed by industry. So Brian, uh, we're now facing into a post-COVID uh, period in our industry. Um, the need for change was pressing beforehand. It's, in my mind, probably more pressing. What do you think about? The most important thing is to re renew the confidence of our industry. We are, a lot of the forecasters are suggesting um, that there's going to be problems. Um, I'm of the view that the industry shutdown can quickly be reopened. However, we shouldn't be making any allowances for that. We, we had a program and an agenda prior to COVID about new regulations, new requirements, and that should not be lessened um, during the post-COVID experience. We should be pushing firmly on with any changes or any um, reforms with vigour. Ryan, several of the areas that we both share a passionate interest is uh, the adoption of Australian standards and increased safe work methods on site. How do you feel we're going to navigate that as we go forward? Well, the reform process has to involve um, more education, better safety standards, better quality outcomes. And of course, this instills confidence in the consumer and the investor to go forward and build more. So for us as builders, as a representative of builders, we need to improve the level of their participation and their outcomes. So Brian, the, uh, there's an accepted correlation between safety and Australian standards. You, you can almost invariably predict that if a job's unsafe, that the quality of the construction is going to be poor. Do you agree with that? Look, there is a link between poor safety and poor quality outcomes. And we've certainly seen in recent times, perhaps in the last six months, with the um, commissioner's intervention in certain areas, that um, quality has improved and site safety has improved. We've seen that, but that's been as a result of direct intervention at a frontline level, which we support. We've actually got to now redefine what the future regulator looks like. What do you think the big challenges there are going to be? Look, the, the industry adapts quickly. And if the regulator has a new protocol of formal intervention, and that gets out to various sites or gets out to the various levels of um, the different projects, then we have to work with it and we have to adapt and we have to adapt properly. But it also sends a, a message to those who wish to invest in our industry, that is the developers, that if you want a proper, safe, good product, a product that consumers can rely on, then they have to play a major role in this as well. Brian, 
if we're having a conversation now with the consumers of our industry, and you know, don't forget that they've seen in recent times the history of defects and uh, sh some shocking examples of stuff that we're, none of us are proud of. Um, what do you think the undertaking that the industry can be and should be giving right here and now to say to customers, it's time to get back in the market? You know, um, David, the issue of producing a better outcome for the end user, which is the consumer, is not rocket science. We just need quality builders, we need educated people, we need good design, we need good standards. And in many instances, we need higher standards. And we need builders and contractors and constructors to actually build to those higher standards. Uh, if that's achieved, and I'm very sure and the master builder movement is supportive of that, that we can achieve this um, in, a, in a reasonably short period of time. Well, Brian, I'd like to thank you for coming in and talking to us and our, our, all of the stakeholders that we have interested in this. And I, I know that you and the HIA also share similar sorts of commitments. So I want to acknowledge that leadership and thank you very much. Many thanks for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.